starting now. Hello. We're live. We're recording this live on twitch.tv slash Octavian Zero if you want to come hang out with us in the future. But hi, YouTube. How are you guys? Uh, I'm not going to be looking at Twitch chat during this, so they could be saying whatever they want. I have no idea. This video, though, is going to be all about trying to elucidate how I think about ROG crafting and how I get decent items. I say decent items because ROG is unlikely to give you something truly best in slot. Uh, ROG is excellent at giving you that belt or that pair of boots or that amulet that's got real good life, real good res, and is going to hold you over until you can get an influenced piece of gear in that slot. And very, very rarely he will give you an influenced item, but usually it only results in being a base that you can then craft on later rather than being straight out the gate a really good influenced pickup. Uh, but anyways, let's look through his tab here. And I have looked at these items already, but I'll go through them. Maybe not one by one because there's a lot, but I'll briefly look over them and tell you why I turn some of them down and start with others as decent crafting starting points. Um, and another thing to keep in mind... No matter how good your starting point, some, sometimes Rog is just having a bad day and does not give you the crafts that you need, and you'll end up with a dud. So do go in kind of expecting a dud here or there, and you know, on, the, on the average you'll come out with good items. Uh, but yeah, so the first thing I'll assess, do any of these bases look like they have potential? Um, and a few of the steps there are going to be just looking at straight up the base itself, something like a Rustic Sash I'm very rarely going to craft on, similar to a Chain Belt, because Stygian Vises exist, and so do Crystal Belts, so you're really probably not going to get much in the way of profit from crafting up a crappy belt base like that. So those are just overlooked. Same thing with Studded, maybe I'll craft a Leather Belt, but that's on Hardcore Trade, on Softcore Trade, I'm sure they're kind of duds unless you hit, like, maybe some flask mods with life and res. Um, so I'm hard pressed to go for one of his basic belts uh, as, as a specific point there. Um, another thing, I don't really like going for two-handers or chess pieces very often because even if you get amazing affixes on them, those are some of the gear slots where people are gonna have influenced rolls the most often, particularly chess pieces. There's a lot of powerful influenced rolls that go there. So a lot of the time people don't want a basic chess piece. And also, you need links. And Rug, at least for me, does not like to add sockets or links very often. So even if the stats are great, it's not usually very sellable, simply by virtue of being only a two link or a four link or something garbage like that. So a lot of these are already out of the gate, not things I'm going to look too closely at. You know, these belts, these two-handers, these chess pieces, they're all, you know, I'll glance at them, but I'm not going to put too much stock into them. This one has reduced enemy strength threshold, plus one melee gems, a tiny bit of local crit and life gained on hit on an abyssal axe, which isn't even the two-hand axe base people use. This is about as bad a starting point as you could pick, so let's use that as an example on one end of the spectrum. This golem splitter abyssal axe is awful. Do not start with something that looks like this. However, on the other end of the spectrum is something like jewelry that isn't a belt. Amulets and rings. Every build loves amulets and rings. You can often get away with basic items in those slots because there's things like crit multi or things like spell damage or things like, you know, high chaos res or wed or flat fizz that are all useful attributes and don't need influence bases in order to show up. Not to mention, of course, life and res. Uh, so, the item I'll be using here is either this amulet, which has an okay starting point. Um, I like to look at the suffixes and prefixes independently. The prefixes here aren't very good, but those suffixes are all right. We've got all res, which is great for everything, and then fire damage, which admittedly isn't a very high tier, but ROG does sometimes offer to upgrade tiers, or reroll all your prefixes, or reroll all your suffixes. So what we'd be going into with this amulet, and we can start this now, um, is we're hoping that ROG is going to say, all right, you got a decent starting point here. Let me give you new prefixes, and we'll see if you cooperate. A small etched room. Upgrade four modifiers. This upgrades everything. There are only four modifiers. Another thing you want to look out for, though, is the price. This is priced in Greater Order Artifacts, which are the second rarest. Um, just keep an eye out and make sure he's not overcharging you, like, 50 Grand Order Artifacts for something that's only a small upgrade. That's not really worth your time. Just, you know, make sure he's not giving you an awful deal here. Actually look at this number. So we're going to grab that and get T1 all res. We can add a random anoint. It's not that expensive to do, just a few greater artifacts. Interested? Is pretty unlikely to give me something good, but yeah, we'll take it. Why not? Uh, the prefix, good. This is what we were hoping for. Uh, Fingers of Frost is not the best with percent fire damage, but meh. Um, we will hope for a life roll here. Again, this is, I think, common order artifacts. This is quite a cheap craft that he's offering, just 12 of the common currency. And we added Flatfizz. 
I could knock some of its enchantments about. So we could keep the T1 flat fizz. That is not a bad roll. Um, we could just take this now and try to like annul a prefix and craft life, but even that I don't think would be good enough to sell. So it's probably actually better, despite the fact we did hit a pretty good roll with that uh, prefix add, to take this reroll here and just hope for a decent life roll and maybe mana or maybe flat fizz or maybe wed. We'll see what happens. Is your lucky we got flat yes and percent evasion, which is not really ideal. We don't want to remove the suffixes because the suffixes are why we started with this item in the first place. We're going to skip past that. And I don't really want to spend grands on this because it's not in a very good spot at the moment. So this was a bit of a dud. As I said at the beginning, you're going to get a handful of those. We went in gambling on getting decent prefixes to go with these suffixes. We got a few opportunities for that but we didn't luck out in the end, so we're just going to take the item and not waste our rarest currency here on an upgrade that's not really going to make the amulet all that much better. So we're going to take that and cut our losses. Uh, the other one that I wanted to work with here was this weapon. This has pretty good suffixes like the other one before. Um, it's got some crit multi and crit chance. They're not very high tier, but again, you can upgrade the tiers of modifiers. And it even, even has an acceptable prefix in the form of the flat fire dispels. So we're going to get started here. Uh, we're hoping to get maybe add a prefix. We really want upgrade tiers of modifiers. We don't mind leaving a suffix open for crafts rolls for people or maybe leaving a prefix open. So all of that in mind, we're going to go in here and we're not going to remove all suffix modifiers because that is precisely why we picked this wand. It has two good suffixes. This, this would undo the entire reason we're crafting here. So we're going to skip that. Add a suffix three times is fine. It's not ideal. We wanted to kind of keep a suffix open and work on the prefixes, but it's not going to brick the item. Um, and we want to keep going with further crafting steps after this one in the off chance that we get, you know, the uh, option to add more prefixes and potentially hit percent spell damage. So what we added was a T1 cold res. We'll take this one is, is nothing. It costs barely anything to do. It doesn't really improve the item, but it lets us just move on easily. Fill all empty modifier slots. That's what I'm going to offer you a premium deal. So we can take that. And we can hope for percent spell damage. But our odds of hitting it aren't amazing. Mm, I kind of want to go for it. Just because it's not that expensive to do. But... It's not very likely to upgrade the weapon from here. We were really hoping for um, the, the craft that would allow us to upgrade tiers of mods. And the more mods that we add, the less likely we are to upgrade the tiers of the suffixes that we're trying to target here. So this is kind of... like There's an argument to be made to just cut our losses, but I'm going to keep going. We have 50% spell damage. We are not rerolling those prefixes. No. We are not rerolling the suffixes, so we're done. Um, pretty decent, pretty decent wand, though. 80% damage, some crit multi, some crit, and some flat. That can probably sell for between 10 and 20 chaos on hardcore trade. Not sure what it would be worth on softcore trade. And it's pretty darn usable for Sola Cell Found. So I would say that that's a relative success, certainly compared to the amulet that ended up being a dud. Um, I could keep going through this. Rog is excellent. He's a lot of fun to interact with. And he's really good at sort of teaching you what mods to look out for and, and giving you an idea of what items might have potential if you're willing to take the time to try and learn the various different tools that rog has at his disposal and what he might do to your items i think that's really the key for getting better at rog crafting learning all the different things that he can do and understanding what that means in terms of what a good starting point would be what you're hoping for you know basically go in having a plan so to speak Obviously, what Rog will give you is random, but if you have an idea of, oh, these three different things that he could do are all good, then that means your odds are pretty good of getting a decent item on the way out. Doesn't mean you're guaranteed, for sure, but, you know, if, if you understand the system um, at that sort of level, you'll have a lot more success with it. Anyways, I've rambled on long enough. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and you haven't yet, do consider checking out the stream. There'll be a link in the description below for that, or follow me on Twitter or just subscribe here on YouTube. Uh, or, or do them all if you're feeling real generous. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.